a steam plant using a rebuilt Stuart 10V steam engine part 5. After a test run, I position the engine and condenser where they're going to be relative to the boiler. Using a syringe to empty the lubricator condensate and a modification to the lubricator tap so that it can be used to inject oil into the cylinder after a steam run to prevent rusting. This is extremely important when using a steam engine with a cast iron cylinder like on this Stuart 10V. It was convenient to me for the initial steam runs to position the engine as shown here to the right hand side of the boiler so I could catch all of the exhaust condensate in this small plastic tub. It would be less than ideal to position the engine as you see it here in the finished plant. Everything is at the wrong side with this orientation. To pipe the engine like this to the boiler would be difficult with an awful lot of very hot steam piping which could easily burn the fingers of the operator. This is not a marine steam plant so the engine doesn't need to be at one end. It can be at the front of the plant which is a logical place to put it. The first thing to do is to turn the boiler around to match the orientation of the piping from the condenser and to the steam engine. For this plant, this is an ideal arrangement. The steam pipe from the steam tap on the boiler needs to connect to the inlet of the displacement lubricator. The piece of silicone rubber tubing that goes between the exhaust pipe of the engine and the inlet to the condenser are in an ideal position. The pipe that is in the middle of the condenser's top cap is the steam outlet to the chimney. So all I need to do is connect a piece of silicone rubber tubing from this to the pipe on the chimney itself. And the pipe to drain the water from within the condenser is at the right hand side of the condenser, an ideal position. In this clip the positioning is quite accurate. This is where the parts are going to be, so it's an ideal time to measure for a baseboard. And the measurements are 12 inches long by 10 inches wide. Not too big and easy to store when the plant is not in use. I await the arrival of the baseboard which should be here by Saturday. Today is Friday. At first I thought the baseboard was early but it was the postman bringing me some parts from Clevedon Steam. This is not really part of the episode, consider it as a bit of an interlude. I have a couple of old Stuart boilers that I want to make work. One of them is a 504 and the other one is a bit smaller and it's a 501. I was so impressed with these Clevedon steam burners and the amount of heat they produce, I bought some and that's what arrived in the post this morning. And once again I have no financial connection or otherwise and no sponsorship deal with Clevedon steam. In the previous four videos, I used Cleveland Steam's website address as the watermark. If I just flash up the website address on a video, I still get a lot of emails for the web address of where I bought various parts. Because of the inclusion in the previous four videos, it should now be imprinted on your brain and you won't have to ask me. I generally feature things in my videos that are good. And that is why I bought these particular parts you see on screen from Clevedon Steam. I'm going to use two burners like on the Pisces boiler for the 504 and just one burner on the 501. And I'm sure with the heat that these things produce it should be more than sufficient. For now though I'm putting them in one of my special drawers in this old cabinet. Just so I know where they are and I've videoed the operation so I don't forget where I put them. I've never been into recreational drugs, so don't be fooled by this. It's a plastic syringe with a metal point, but the sharp point's been ground off, that's how I bought it. In my opinion though, even with the sharp point actually removed, it still could be dangerous, so be careful. You need to remove the condensate from the displacement lubricator after every run. A plastic syringe fitted with silicone rubber tubing is a bit too thick to get down between the side of the casing and the tube in the middle in order to extract the water. Here is just what I'm doing using the metal pointed syringe. As soon as you see any oil entering the syringe, stop. You only need to withdraw the water, not the oil. Here I'm getting rid of the water in the syringe and the tiny bit of oil onto a kitchen towel. After emptying the condensate, top up the lubricator just in case you forget. And for this you need to use steam oil, not motor oil, not machine oil and not lubricating oil. 
Steam oil is specially formulated for the job of lubricating steam engine cylinders. This type of displacement lubricator has a steam tap on it, and I don't need to use this as the steam tap on the boiler is very close to the engine. I'm going to convert this steam tap into an entry point in order to facilitate lubrication of the engine after the run to prevent rust. I need to make a small cap with an o-ring inside it, and here's the process. I'm using my smallest lathe, which is a Warco M180, and it's in my smaller workshop built onto the kitchen of the house. Note to self, it's a good idea to check the centre height of the tooling that I'm using. When I fitted these lathe tools into the small quick change tool post, I fitted them slightly too low. I will correct this in due course, but not today. You've seen this many times in my videos, it's not always the same centre drill, but this is a centre drill fitted into the tailstock chuck and I'm drilling a hole right in the centre of the work. This is to guide the twist drill, which in this case is a 7 seconds of an inch twist drill, which is tapping size for quarter by 32 threads per inch. After drilling the hole, I stop the lathe and then I thread the hole a quarter by 32 threads per inch right down the middle as far as the tap will go. I use a lathe tool to shorten the end part and remove any burrs left by the drill. And then using a parting tool which is really long, sticking out a long way from the tool post and don't forget this is a very cheap tool post, it's one I bought to see whether it was any good and as it turns out, yes it is very good indeed. After the parting tool, I cleaned up the face and rounded the end. And this is what I've made, it's just a blanking plug, but it's not a plug, it's a blanking socket. Here I'm using my whetstone and a little oil to clean up the end. This is a really useful tool, in fact I think I'll buy another one for the other workshop. The final part of this video shows me fitting a steam grade silicone o-ring into the blanking plug. And finally I screw the plug in place where once there was a valve. All I need to do now at the end of a steam run is quickly remove this plug, squirt some WD-40 and steam oil into the pipe, then run the engine on any kind of small compressor to blow the oil and WD-40 mixture through the cylinder and the steam chest to make sure it never rusts. That's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.